Hey, scholars, good to be back with you. So why am I sitting on the floor in my little office behind this wooden thing with a bottle of disinfectant and a stick and a clamp? Well, we're going to do an experiment on statically indeterminate structures. Now, statically indeterminate structures are just ones that you can't analyze using statics. Can you analyze them? Sure. You just can't analyze them using statics. And for those of us who are taking a statics class right now, it's really important to know the distinction. So I'm going to set up a statically indeterminate problem after I get off the floor here. And uh, I'm going to go to my little whiteboard over there, and I'm going to show you why it's statically indeterminate. So let's do this. First thing I've got to do is climb out from behind this, this block and this table. Hang on. Oh, God. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Okay. What I've got here is it's just a little wooden stick. This is a little quarter-inch square piece of uh, pine, I guess. If you want to use proper metric units, it's about uh, six millimeters square, pretty much. And I've got a little screwdriver over here, and I'm just using that as that acts like a pin end. And over here, it's just resting on the corner of my little table, which also acts like a pinned end. Can't really see it here, but it's actually off the table a little bit. So I need a load. Well, that's what this is. All right. I'm shooting this in uh, the end of November 2020, so COVID is a thing. So I've got a bottle of uh, botanical disinfectant solution. And it's got, the reason I got it is it's got this nice little, little nozzle on it I can use to hang. So right there, right, so I've got a structure, my little stick. It's a very simple structure, but it's a structure. And it's pinned at both ends. It's basically pinned there because it's rotating about that point. And it's rotating about that point. Now, are those actually pins? No, they're not. But do they act like pins? You bet they do. So, this we can analyze. But, I'm not real happy with what's going on here. This is, this uh, looks like a pretty marginal structure to me. So I'm going to take this little clamp here, this cheapo vice grip, and I'm going to clamp this down. So give me a second here. There. That's what you call way more gooder. Well, not really. So what we've got now is this is basically now clamped at this end. It can't move up and down. And it also has zero slope, or pretty close to zero slope right there. So this is now a clamped boundary condition. It even has a clamp. That one is still pinned. So I've now got a clamped pinned beam with an off-center load. This turns out to be statically indeterminate. Now, can you analyze it? Sure, but you need strength of materials to analyze it. Statics isn't going to do the job. The reason this is statically indeterminate is that I'm going to have more unknowns than I have equations. Well, let's move to the board now and let's see how that works. Okay, here we are back at the board and I've sketched out the problem now in looks a lot more like a statics problem. I've got the clamp at this end and I've got a roller pin at this end and that represents the screwdriver and that represents that, uh, that little the vice grip clamp I had. Now I took some guesses at the dimensions. I called that 0.8 meters. That looks about right. And uh, 0.3 there. And the, the uh, bottle has, holds one liter, so that looks pretty close. So we know the process now. The process, the recipe, there's a video on the recipe. I'll put a link to that maybe up here. So you can go back and click on that if you want. But the recipe has four required steps. The first step is a working diagram. Well, that's this. Second step is a free body diagram. That's going to be this here in a minute. Third step is to write out the equations of static equilibrium. And the fourth step is to solve for something. So let me turn this into a free body diagram. It's not yet, but it will be here in a second. Ready? Go. Okay, there, that's a lot tidier. Let me get this out of the way. That's a lot tidier now. Now remember, a free body diagram, I've cut the structure free from its supports. 
And the way the supports talk to the structure is through all these reaction forces and moments that I've added. This is how the structure knows the supports are there. I've got my positive sign convention, because remember, without a positive sign convention, gang, it's not a free body diagram. So that's step two. Step three, let's write out some equations of equilibrium. Well, there aren't any forces in the x direction, so let's maybe write that one out first. Some of the forces in x is 0, and that's ax, and that's it. So we know ax is 0, so tick that one off. Some of the forces in the y direction. Now well, let's see. I've got ay minus f plus, I can clean that up, by equals 0. So there's two things I don't know. Well, there's three things I don't know. This one I don't know, but this, this equation is irrelevant, so I'm going to cross that out. So right now I've got two things I don't know, ay and by, and I've only got one equation. I need another equation. Oh, okay, fine. Let's sum the moments about somewhere. And let's sum the moments around point A. There's a, there's a couple forces there, and if I sum the moments about point A, the perpendicular distance from those forces to point A is zero, so they drop out. So let's just... Uh, add some stuff up here. Now, MA is counterclockwise. My uh, positive sign convention says counterclockwise is positive. So that, I'll just add that in here. And let's see, I've got uh, 0.3 times F. That's, F's terrible, isn't it? Hang on. Ah, that's better. Um, so if I put my finger there, F tries to, tries to induce a clockwise moment. Well, that's negative according to that. So 0 0.3 meters times F. So far, so good. Let's bring it on home here. By is positive, so that's going to induce a counterclockwise moment. That's positive. So zero plus, uh, plus 0 0.8 meters times By. And that's all zero. Perfect. There's my second equation. But I got that. Wait a minute. I got one. I'm going to circle the things I don't know. I'm going to circle them in red here just to make sure we, we get the point. There's one thing I don't know. There's another thing I don't know. But dang it, there's another thing I don't know. Now I've got two equations and I got three unknowns. Can I write another equation? Well, mathematically, I suppose I could. I could sit there in some moments at a couple more points, but that's not going to work. The problem is, since I'm working in two dimensions here, I only have three degrees of freedom. That's three ways this structure could move. It can move horizontally, it can move vertically, and it can rotate within this plane, rotate about what would be the z-axis. That's what this says. There's three degrees of freedom. That means I only get to write three equations. I can write more if I want. Mathematically, I can. I could take a moment there, and a moment there, and a moment there. But when I do the algebra, I'm going to find out those equations are not independent of each other. They're all related, so I can't solve. So I'm stuck. There's no way around this, at least using statics. I have one, two, three unknowns, and I got two equations. That's what makes this a statically indeterminate problem. Can you solve this problem using some sort of structural mechanics? Absolutely. You just can't do it with statics. Well, how would you do it? Well, the next class after statics in the, in the plan of study of most engineering programs is called strength of materials. When About a thousand years ago when I took it, we called it the, the mechanics of deformable bodies, I think. And the students, we all called it deformables. Um, so maybe at Virginia Tech they're still calling it that, I don't know. Um, but that's the next class. And in that class, you start look, assuming the structure can bend. Well, clearly that structure down there was bending a lot. So assuming that it's rigid wasn't a great assumption. So when you add in the mathematics that describe the def deformations of the structure, that gives you enough extra equations. Now you can solve this. So you can solve this problem. You just can't do it using statics. And that makes it statically indeterminate. So I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.